We are going to deviate from the original syllabus. We had planned on relentlessly and exhaustively covering the canon of homophones. We might still do that, but first, let's provide the viewer with a leap of writing proficiency that cannot be delayed. Homophones can wait. If you are a novice writer, what I am about to tell you will propel you forward by about five years. If you are now writing at a fifth grade level, this insight will elevate you to about a tenth grade level. Please excuse my archaic reference points. When I say that you will soon be writing at a sophomore level, I am hearkening back to a time when North American high schools, not just Canadian high schools, imparted a challenging curriculum that was ultimately rewarding. Yes, even the good old USA used to routinely provide the student with an education that prepared him for a happy and successful life. So please bear with me on my reference points. Here, groovy grammarian, is the promised revelation. The fastest way to improve your writing is to become aware of the origins of English words. Specifically, Learn when to use words of Greek and Latin origin and when to use words of Anglo-Saxon origin. Almost universally, Anglo-Saxon words differ from their Greco-Roman counterparts in several ways. Northern European words tend to be shorter, less formal, less clinical, less official, and they provide a more visceral and clearer visual reaction. Anglo-Saxon words are often considered vulgar. By contrast, Greco-Latin words are usually polysyllabic. They sound more formal, more clinical, and more official. They provide an emotional distance. Greek and Latin-based words are better able to describe concepts, abstractions, and complexities. Notice that I just used three Latin-based words that have no good Anglo-Saxon synonyms and require other Latin-based words to discuss their meanings. When should you use an Anglo-Saxon word and when should you employ a Greco-Roman substitute? That is the giant leap of the literary kind. Consciously embrace this choice, this skill, and word knowledge becomes word wisdom. Master this and you are a good writer. We're going to discuss this topic in more detail, but we are going to conclude with the topic of Greek versus Latin words. In general, everything we said about Latin words is true of Greek words, only more so. Tetra sounds a little more academic than quad, and quad sounds fancier than four. In general, 
the law falls back on Latin phrases, and science tends to use words of Greek origin. If the Latin word is a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10, the substitute Greek word is probably an 11. As always, the Guinea Grammarian is sponsored by the writer's writer, Frank Lee Rio. If you want to write, read. If you want to write compelling fiction, read the work of Frank Lee Rio. His links are listed below.